First Corinthians chapter 14. I hope you found it because we're ready to go. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33 down to 35. Ready? For God is not the author or beginning of confusion. Oh, you got confusion going on at home. God ain't in it. Confusion can't get along in the church. God ain't in it. Oh, y'all cry here. Out of order stuff. God ain't into out of order stuff. He's not in, he's not the beginning of confusion, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints. Now, if you are ain't, he ain't talking to you. But in the churches of the saints, you know, confusion gonna come, but you need an apostle. To set that order. To bring the peace in. You know, everybody can't be an apostle because everybody can't bring order. Come on now. Let me tell you, that authority of an apostle, it, God got to give it to you. Everybody don't have that authority. Even some pastors don't have the authority to set the order. So they need an, they need an apostle. Come on, somebody here. Amen. And when the pastors know they church out of order, they can't do nothing about it. They trying their best. They call their apostle. Can you come down? Come, come on and help us out. Come on. Call. When, when, uh, when, Samaria, when, when Samaria was baptized, they called for the big boys in, in Jerusalem. Come on down. They was baptized, but they need the Holy Ghost. So they called them apostles from Jerusalem. Come on, somebody here. Philip, no, I'm a deacon. I'm a, I got to call Peter and John finish up what I couldn't do. And some of them pastors know I need an apostle to help me. Yes, Lord. I think I'm just one of them boys. I think I am. Just a matter of time. You're going to see it. Verse 34. Let your women In other words, get control of your women. <laughs> Let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak <laughs> well, that's cold blooded but they are commanded under obedience as also said the law now what law we haven't read this in the law but let's watch this women there's a law you have the law is you being subjection to your husband. Y'all got quiet over here. What's I could take that to a church and just slice it? <laughs> but they are com he didn't he didn't he didn't suggest you women. He didn't give you a suggestion. He didn't give you an option. He didn't tell you if you want to. He said, as also said, the law. The law is again. Be ye subject to your own husbands. And if they will learn anything, I'm going to help y'all in a minute. Let them ask the boss man at work. No. Let them ask their co-workers if they will learn anything at work. <laughs> about the word. Let them ask their co-workers. No, let them ask Big Gossip and Sue. <laughs> if they were learning anything, let them ask their husbands at church. At home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. That's what it said. I'm going to read this out of my message, Bob. I like reading this one. When we worship the right way, God doesn't stir up into confusion. He brings us into harmony. This goal for all churches, no exceptions. Wives must not disrupt worship. Talking when they should be listening. Asking questions when they should 
more appropriately be asked of their husbands at home. Some of the stuff you asking your pastor, you should be asking your husband. All right. God's book of the law guides our manners and customs here. Wives have no license to use the time of worship for unwarranted speaking. Do you, both women and men, imagine that you are a sacred oracle determining what's right and wrong? Do you think everything revolves around you? First Timothy, we're coming back to this. First Timothy chapter 2. Some of y'all ain't got it yet. I'm going to help y'all with some holiness. I'm going to help y'all with some good old holiness teaching. Doctrinal teaching. Come on. Second. First, first Timothy. First one Timothy. One Timothy. Chapter two. Verse seven. Get it? Say amen. Remember I told you. You need somebody that is ordained to be an apostle to set order in the church. Because some pastors just don't have that ability. They can shepherd, but it's hard for them to correct issues. You know, he said a bishop must be apt to teach. In other words, he might not be that good, but he might he got to be able to do some kind of teaching. But an apostle, he got to be able to break that thing down to you. Come on now. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 ready? We're going to go down to 13. Where unto I am ordained a preacher and wait a minute. He differentiated a preacher and an apostle. I'm not only a preacher. I told you then. But I'm also an apostle. An apostle is one that's sent from that's sent by God. Ain't that right baby? That's right. A preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in who? Right. And I do what? A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I therefore, we talk about the women, I therefore that men pray everywhere. Oh, talking about to every man in the church everywhere. He said, the men, you got to pray. Lifting up holy hands without being angry with your wives. Y'all got quiet, I see. Without being furious and angry at the preacher when he got on to you. You're sitting up praising God, you're just mad. You, you trying to praise him to show your wife, I'll show you. And out of, you shouting out of anger. You praying, lifting, leading a prayer, opening prayer out of anger. Father God, bless this church. And you just angry. He said, you're going to pray. He said, pray without wrath and anger and doubting. Yeah. Believing, not truly believing or wavering in your faith. How you praying and worshiping, lifting hands and you wavering. You don't know whether you want to be saved or backslide. He said, you shouldn't be doing that. In like manner, also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness. And sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good work. Not only you profess, but you possessing it. You possess what you pro profess. You pro you pro possessing. Good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach. See, a lot of preachers don't like touching on this because they don't understand it. I understand what I'm about to tell you. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority. Uh oh. Usurp mean. To take a position of importance illegally or by force. You shouldn't be over 
burden or trying to override your husband's authority. Nor to observe or take authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Now, when it says for Adam was first formed, then Eve, this is talking in the context of marriage. When a woman's being silent, it's talking about at home. But there's also some situations that were surrounding this. I'm going to tell you why Paul said all this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to talk tonight. My thought tonight is this. Get ready for it. Stay in your God-given place. Stay, woman, don't you usurp authority over the man. Stay in your God-given place. Men should everywhere pray, not lifting holy hands in wrath. Stay in your place. Darling, stay in your place. Stay in your God-given place. Men, stay in your God-given place. Women, stay in your God-given place too. Stay in your God. Y'all ain't gonna like this one. All right. That's why I need time for this. Listen to this. In that culture, in because he's writing to the Ephes Ephesian church in Ephesus. In that culture, women were not allowed a formal education. Listen to me. So virtually women in Ephesus at that time were illiterate. And so this, of course, made being a woman teacher a bit difficult. Let her keep silent. She wasn't educated enough to preach. Paul's instructions imply women in the churches at Ephesus did not have adequate knowledge of the truth. And therefore needed to learn first rather than to teach. False teachers were convincing women of bad doctrine. According to 1 Timothy 3 and 6, read that real quick. First, uh, uh, Minister Gaitre, find me 1 Timothy 3 and 6. False teachers was convincing women of bad doctrine. This is what he was telling them, 1 Timothy 3 and 6. Okay, says, not a novice, let's be lifted up with pride. Is that 1 Timothy 3 and 6? Uh -oh, yeah, 1 Timothy. Uh-oh, 2 uh -oh. yeah. Timothy 3 and 6. Okay, 2 Timothy 6. Let's try that. Who gave himself a ransom for all First, to No, I, I got the wrong one down here. First Timothy four and three. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna get this one. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Okay, four and three. This is what he was teaching them. Go ahead. Forbidden marriage and pe I'm go ahead. Uh-huh. Which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. They were teaching these women not to marry. Okay. Teaching these women not to eat certain meats. They was causing these women to be in rebellion to their husbands and to their homes. So Paul concern is about women propagating bad theology, not just the ideal of women teaching. So usurp, I told you, means to take up a position of importance illegally or by force. Look at a um, lesson, chapter. I mean, back in the lesson, chapter two, verse twelve, First Timothy. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Y'all follow me now. The question at hand in 1 Timothy is who brings divine knowledge of the truth and salvation to people? The Ephesians were buying into a pagan belief that women were special mediators of that truth and salvation to man. Paul is correcting the false teaching that women had some sacred connection to divine knowledge that made them superior to men. And so the teaching that was going on, it made women feel like they was dominant. They, they, was, they were superior.
superior to their, their husbands. And so Paul said, it's not an order. You're not, listen, Adam was created first, not Eve. You should not be usurping authority over your husband. You don't take something. Let me tell you, when you usurp it, that means you're forcing your way to something that don't belong to you. God never told you to run your husband. God never told you to talk crazy to him. God never told you to embarrass him in public. God never told you to wear the pants of the house. Y'all got quiet here. He said you are out of order. Stay in your God given place. Y'all don't like it. See, some of these women, some women come from these strong backgrounds where women ran the house while the men were just puppets. Men is more than carrying your bags and opening your doors. Y'all quiet here now. It's more than driving you around town and, and letting you in your house and letting you out. No, a man got to have authority in his home. And when you, a man don't have authority and the woman is, she have usurped authority. She's taken something that did not belong to her. And in the Ephesians church, these women had a doctrine where they were superior to the man. They weren't, listen, they weren't educated, they didn't know much, but they was taught by these false teachers that you are dominant and you are stronger than the man and you to bring salvation to him but Paul said let me correct you for a minute listen you keep silent and let your husband teach you because God created Adam first then you in other words let him talk first and you listen because you out of order I was going to get heavy than this y'all just hold on to your seat back I'm telling you So y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying. And so, <laughs> so Paul's correcting the false teacher that women had some sacred connection to divine knowledge that made them superior to men and more fit to teach about spiritual things. That is why Paul tells men in First Timothy two and eight. And I will therefore that men pray everywhere. See, in other words, you you listen, men. Don't be so quick to let these women take the charge. You, All right. He didn't say women couldn't pray because the Bible said if a woman pray or prophesy, let her head be covered. So it's not excluding her from prayer. But it's saying for the man, get out your lazy bone and get yourself up and lead the prayer. Y'all got quiet. Stop letting these women be the prayer warriors in your home. The women being the leaders in the church. The women being the leaders in Bible study. Women being leaders in worship. He said let men everywhere pray. Men, stand your right for play. Stop letting these women take control of stuff. It's quiet here now. Come on, preacher. I will therefore let men pray everywhere. It's sad where men is not in the place to lead spiritually. The way you know you're not in the in the place to lead spiritually is your prayer life is not strong. You don't have a strong prayer life. What's prayer? Connecting to God. It's talking to God. God talking to you. He said, "Why is the women taking?" Let me tell you why. Because women is getting a. It, it seems like the women have more authority than the men, and it shouldn't even be like that. Men, we should supposed to take that weight off the women. It's certain weights of spiritual. It's certain spiritual weights that women is not designed to carry. It's no knock on a woman, but if God created Adam first, that means that's an authority that he's supposed to have that she shouldn't be having. That's why most of these women is sick and going through because they're trying to carry their weight and yours too. You better step, know your right for place. Y'all better hear me. You better know your place in the Lord. Take this joke off these women. Come on, son. It's time for men to be men of God. Stay in your God-given place. Women are intercessors, women are prayer warriors, women are worship leaders, women are ministers, women it is. Let me tell you, God called women to preach, and I know he can call them to preach, because it's all through the Bible. God has called women to lead people in the Old Testament and in the New. But God said, just because I called them to lead, don't mean the man is not the head. There's a place for the man, and there's a place for the woman. When men get in their place, the woman will be in us too. But listen, the woman got to be the man and the, and the woman in the church. Oh, somebody out their place. 
You shouldn't be no weak man letting no woman domineer you and her personality be stronger than yours. Come on, somebody here. God created a man to be firm, to be strong. Come on, shot. Y'all better hear me. A man don't mean being, neither do he break. A man stands strong on what God told him to do. So he's telling here in this church, he said, listen, these women is domineering. I need the men to stand up and pray. Y'all, yeah, okay. Some of the women ain't like that just certain times of the month. They like that every every day. Can't blame that certain time. I just want them. No, it ain't, no, ain't the day of the month. It's your personality. You've been raised to dominate men. That's all you see to dominate men. Men, you talk, they get quiet. You ain't talk, you finish their words from. I can't hear nobody. That's a dominating woman. You need to sit down and know your place in church. Y'all, come on, somebody here, y'all. He said, listen, because there's out of all the stuff going on in the church, I need men. Therefore, men to pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Say, not only I need you to pray, but I need these men to be holy. These men got to be holy men. Leading that house and holy ass. Y'all can't be no weak, jelly back men. Don't want to do nothing. We can't be men playing on video games. Certain age, we done with video games. I'm going to play a video game. I'm playing it with my son. You ain't finna catch me by myself playing no video game for no hour. What it look like you coming home? I'm going to... Y'all, come on. I'm playing with my son. I'm playing with Junior. If I'm playing it, I'm playing with Junior. I'm not playing no Madden by myself. You finna catch me. In the... What you doing, real? Playing Madden. While I'm playing Madden, I should be in a praying. I can't even open that word up and start reading it and help this woman that's trying to help me be the man of God. See, some of these men can't be men because you're not helping your woman help you to be a man of God. Some of these women waiting, they turn you on. Come on, be a man of God, be a man. But we so lazy, we so fleshly, we so corner. I can't hear nobody until they got to take the weight that we supposed to be carrying. Stay in your God-given place, man. Come on, Pastor. Lift up them holy. That's what he said. You gotta lift up holy. Let me know I'm lifting them up. I'm not just lifting up anything. These hands are these hands been holy all week. Okay, here nobody. These hands been holy. I have not touched the unclean thing. I have not used these hands to touch stuff I shouldn't be touching. I can't feel nobody. My hands is holy. When I raise them up, God, I'm showing you my hands are clean. Not just my spirit, but my hands. I have not touched no dirty magazine. I ain't touched no dirty movement. I have not used the remote no control to find stuff on TV. I shouldn't be watching. I've been lifting hard. See, my hands are clean. Know your God-given place. That's why some of these domineering women, they like them weak men. They can run over. They like them men they can argue with and just, just, just walk off. He said, I'm calling men everywhere. Lifting up holy. First of all, first of all I would therefore let men pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt and being men of self-control, men of holiness, men of discipline. Come on, man. Hey, Come on. Come on, man. Come on, Pastor. And like why? And like men also, but women. Oh God. Adorn themselves in modest apparel. See, these women was out of order. They didn't want no structure from their husbands. They didn't want no husband to tell them what to dress, how to dress and what to put on. Because modest appear mean less skin revealing clothes. Hey, really? Keeping within measure. Hey. If they're going to wear makeup, they're wearing it within measure. measure. They're wearing it in gold or silver. They're wearing it within measure. <laughs> they're wearing a dress. They're wearing it within measure. <laughs> they're not showing all their skin when they go out to places. They ain't showing the tight. Hot, the, 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 the skirt so tight. They're showing the curves and everything else. He said a woman got to be adorned in modest appearance. That means little or none. Come on, somebody. If you're going to wear it, wear it in holiness. Wear it. Come on, somebody. You're going to put something on your face. Put it on decently. You're going to do it all the time. I'm going on a date. I'm going to do a little pot of here. 
bit, a little platter up. You ain't worried no God, y'all got quiet here. You tell my listen, we gotta stand our God given place. If you are sanctified woman, certain things you shouldn't be put on your body. If you say you holy, if you can't wear the church, you should wear it outside the door. I can't hear nobody here. If you don't look like that, I, God, y'all. If you don't look like that in church, why are you looking like that outside the door? It's because you're at your God given place. If you are sanctified woman, the way you look at church, the way you gonna look at home, you gonna look at the birthday party, you gonna look at the family unit, you gonna look at the kids' baby party, and little bitty baby party, you gonna dress holy, you gonna dress sanctified. I can't hear nobody here, cause you know your place. Everybody gotta know their place. Women know your place. Get them clothes off. You shouldn't be wearing just because your husband wanna see you in it. You gonna sin because your husband wanna see you in something that God forbid. You gonna go to hell for your husband, or you go right to hell with your husband. If he the head, let him be the head, and let him follow you. And you follow him to hell. The blind gonna follow the blind. They all gonna go to hell. He's my head. Well, go ahead and follow him, and you go to hell right with him. Y'all quiet here now. Your husband don't have no authority to make you sin again. This gonna be teaching tonight. I'm sitting there preaching. Your husband don't have no authority to tell you what he want to see you in if it's violating God's word. He's my head. Okay, he's your head. Go ahead and obey him. But you and your husband going to hell. Y'all don't like me tonight. Say, let it be modest up here. You going to a picnic? Be modest in the picnic. It don't mean you wear no long mat, long dress to a picnic, but be modest in your apparel. Y'all quiet on me here. Be modest when you go on vacation out there. When nobody know you. Y'all don't have to like me here. He said modest appearance. That means you are not showing no skin. And you wearing it to a measure. You go close. It's, 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 it's a measure. Amen. You're not too you not too sanctified going out. You ain't too fleshy. But you're going on a date. You ain't trying to look like you're going to church with an Easter hat on. You're going on a date with your honey. Oh boy, as she come out here and I'm I'm saying we're going on a blind date. You meet me there. I, we meet together. And this we don't matter. We married. You and I go. She got one of them old uh uh, uh, uh funeral hats on it's with the neck <laughs> coming her eyes. But oh, wait a minute, that's out of order. We on a date, not at a funeral. Who's dying? She dressed all in black with the with the veil on. That's beyond measure. What you think, brother Robert? You, your wife, you met on a blind date. She got that veil on her head. She number looks the, the little nets. And all the time she let up when you want to kiss her. Oh, a little. Mm, okay, let it back down. Yeah, she don't let it all the way up. She just let her mouth up to her mouth where she can put the food in. Modest up. These women had lost a modest shit because they feel like they was more dominant to their husband. They couldn't tell them nothing. Their husband couldn't tell them nothing. Let me tell you how you know you got some rough feathers on you women if your husband rebuke you and you don't take it and you get angry and you get my attitude. I got quiet. Tell you that you, you, you ain't wearing that today. That, that ain't looking right. You can't. That's for me to see. And you get mad. You got quiet right there. I think I better stay there. Sister Linda, I'm trying to help her get through. But they're getting quiet on me, so it made me want to stay there a little longer. That's how you know you ain't, you ain't delivered, woman. When it, see, it's time for a man to, to rise up and be the man of God in your house and stop being so passive. Well, whatever was just on. All right. Now, what do God say? Did I make this up? Nope. Adorn. That's what it said, right? Adorn themselves. In other words, by now you should know how to dress without anybody telling you. You know what? I want everybody to hear me and take this back to anybody whom it may concern. I might bring it up again when they come. If you've been in this church any length of time, we should have to wrap you up in no sheet. Why are we wrapping you up in sheets? You've been here long enough to know what we stand for. Right, 
stay in your God-given place. Let me, I can stay there for a long time. Let me keep going. With shamefacedness. I'm going to break this down to you. Shamefacedness means that you look shameful. Uh-oh. That means it's, a, it's kind of an embarrassment on you. So women are supposed to go around looking shameful and embarrassed? Yes. What do you mean, Pastor? When it comes to them not looking right before the eyes of the public and you know this thing ain't fitting right, you should be ashamed. And you know you got a higher standard than this. If you lost your shame by how you look, you need to come back to this altar. Shame faces. You, you feel embarrassed while they cake stuff on your face. Y'all quiet here. All right. Shame faces. It's a firm, firm and modesty. Reverence and respect. You feel ashamed when you're not, when you're not walking in God's reverence and respect with how you look. Y'all don't like me tonight? It's know your place. Y'all don't like that one. I guess I better stay there a little longer because a, a woman of God, you shouldn't be comfortable going to public with tight clothes on. I, I preached a message years ago. You say, well, hey, you backslidden. Because I think you're backslidden. If there's no shame, a holy woman know when I'm not looking right, that's a shame face that's come upon you. Because, because your standard is high. See, this doctrine. This is the doctrine. This is stuff that set the order. That's why people call people like me to come help them. Oh, I'll help him with the, with the help of God. I'll help him. And sobriety. Y'all, sobriety means sound and judgment, self control. Some, see, these women was out, of, was out of order. They wasn't self control, they, they wasn't in sobriety. they doing things that. Let me tell you what a sober wife would do when her husband gone. She'd be at home praying, not on that telephone. Gossiping about the bedroom. Y'all got quiet here, man. She wouldn't be sitting at home thinking about what she can get into. Because she's sober. Y'all don't like me tonight. She's a sober woman. What you been doing all day? I listen, I've been cleaning. I've been praying. I had a little time to sit down and watch it. took a little time out for myself. But I have to t listen. I have to take care of this house. Make sure it's right for you when you get home. But the first thing I done is make sure it's right for God. So I spent time with him. Y'all come on. I made it right for God. So when I do clean and cook, the atmosphere is set for when you get home. You comfortable. Y'all got quiet here now. I got I made sure the bathtub was clean for you. Make sure the water was ready for you. Make sure the dry towel was clean for you. Make sure dinner was on the table. And make sure God's presence was in this house. So when you walk in from a long day, your day melt off for you because you walked into the presence of the Lord. Because I just know my place. I'm sobri I got sobriety and I'm sober. Y'all come on somebody here. You ain't sober sitting there going at home all day. Ain't nothing productive. Nothing, Watching TV all day. Then he get home. You got an attitude with him for nothing. You ain't sober. You need deliverance. Men don't want to. Listen. A man work all day. He don't want to come home to no brawling wife. He don't want to come home to no contentious woman. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You contentious because you ain't been praying. You're angry because you ain't been praying. I can't hear nobody here. You got an attitude because you ain't been praying. Because if you seek the face of God long enough, your attitude going to change. God, we always asking Lord change him. When the last time you prayed for a long time to change me? Help me to see the fault inside of me. Help me to see the... Any hidden Jezebel. Help me to see any. No, y'all got quiet. Help me to see any controlling spirit upon me. Stay in your God given place. Man, get home from work. He don't, he don't feel like hearing all this. Yeah. He don't want to. Oh, hearing it. You wonder why he's sleeping in the car. You wonder why he got peace in the car. He says it's better to dwell on a housetop than in the house of a, with a contention. Here, in other words, this is my interpretation. 
I would add this to a Solomon. It's better to sit on the housetop and take bird droppings on you than the woman dropping that mess on you. Dropping that argument, dropping, dropping that complaint. I was the bird dropping, and you drop all that arguments and the attitude up on me. Y'all got quiet here. That's a new proverb. I rather stay on top of the house and that bird drop and drop on me than you to drop a bad attitude on me when they in the house. Boop, bird. But I got peace up there with the bird dropping. I got a bird nest right across from me. At least the birds come. Right. Only thing they do is drop it on me. That's what. That's all they do is disturb me with dropping. At least they wake me up on time. They get up early in the morning. I'm up early enough. At least they ain't waking me up with arguing. They wake me up with, with cock a doing. Hey, whatever they do. Yeah, they, the rooster too. Sobriety. Yo, God. These women was out of order. Watch this. Braided hair. Y'all, see what I read that last week. Some of y'all didn't like it. And I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say something to you. And I'm going to say this with, with, with gentleness and respect. I'm your pastor at church. Watch this. And when I'm apart from you, I'm your pastor. When you make that covenant to come to this church, I'm your pastor. Right? So whatever I'm teaching you is what I teach you. Nobody should contradict what I'm saying to you. Right? They tell, I'm telling you about Brady Hurt. They telling you it's okay. Who you gonna listen to? Them or me? Y'all got quiet. They have no spiritual authority. They don't know God yet. They probably on their way to hell. How you come to tell? Y'all got quiet. See, I know that Brady Hurt got on somebody's nerve. Y'all better hear me. Lord, you got a nerve to challenge me too? Whoa! You know why you challenged me? Cause somebody told you it was okay. Go up in there like that. I come to tell you, stay in your place for God strike you. You don't play with no apostles. Y'all better hear me. Don't play with no apostolic authority. Y'all come on somebody and then you get the nerve. Call me if you want to. Go ahead. I'm a preacher and an apostle. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. I don't care if you're in Tipolo, Mississippi. If you still a member of this church, you st I'm still your pastor. Not them. Don't go to them. Ask me. Don't ask them. Ask me. Y'all better hear because you know I'm going to tell you the same thing that I preached in church. I ain't going to tell you no good. But pastor should be. What, what did I just read? What did I just tell you? It might get sharp from God. It, it might get sharp because I feel you challenging me. I mean, what? what, 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 what? And ain't no change. You come to the church. Look at just what I said. You know why? Because somebody told you it's okay. Somebody undelivered. Somebody ain't saved. Somebody gonna bust hell wide open. Somebody don't know Jesus telling you something that 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 somebody that know Jesus about about Jesus. Y'all come on! I'm trying to tell you what God said. I'm trying to tell you what's gonna save your soul. You wanna follow them? You go follow them. Don't follow me. You gonna listen to your husband? You gonna listen to your wife? Your daddy? Your mama? Your great great greasy grandpappy? Your mom, your grandmama? You listen to grandmama grandpappy? But listen, don't don't come challenge your pastor. I'm trying to tell you, stay in your place you out of order ain't no other way I ain't finna fix it up I ain't finna say well you know no God said without bread in hell y'all don't have to like this preacher I told y'all, it's just tight. It's going to get a little tighter because cause this stuff going to have to get the churches in order for the church to grow. So you got to get all that bad, those bad weeds out for the good ones to grow. I'm going to tell you something. Don't, don't, listen, don't, let nobody, don't go home and find no comfort zone with people. If you can't find it here, let's let the word cut you. Let it, let it slice you. Let, let it do what it's supposed to do. Stop going home to get some help with other people that don't know God. To, to soothe you to do what you want to do it don't matter you can do that if you want to it don't take all that when the word of God just said it did who you gonna believe it Paul or them your mama daddy your heaven heaven all right hold your spot there we coming back there Jeremiah chapter 4 and 30 Tell you, boy, folks are trying to undermine your leader, a teaching to you. 
four. Yeah, I'm trying to get that just a second. Four and 30. Y'all hold on. Uh-huh. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter four. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Four and 30. Okay. And when thou art spoiled, what didn't thou do? Wait a minute. You know what spoiled people do? They go and tell other folks what I preach. Because they're so used to getting what they want and get preach to me what I want to hear. And then somebody go against what you want and show how spoiled you are. When you spoil, what you going to do? Thou, though thou close it thyself with crimson. You know what they were? It mean red color. Thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. Thou riches thy face with painting in vain. Thou shalt make thyself fair. And thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. I'm going to read this message Bible. And you, what do you think you're up to? Dressing up in party clothes. You know you shouldn't be dressing like that as becoming saints. Decking yourself out with jewelry. You won't worry, worry, be modest in it. Wear something gold. You, I, I like this gold watch and this gold ring. But I ain't for the wear a ring on every finger. Five gold chains and put it on lipstick and mascara. Uh oh. I'm gonna stop right there. Mascara mean mask. It's no saint have no business. Y'all don't have to like me. Well, then when I get off the word, you tell me. Why we is now we? Why you women out there in YouTube land too? As a saint painting your face. All that black stuff on your eyes. Your eyes ain't even, your eyes ain't even, not even hazel. You know you, you, you weren't born with them hazel eyes. You, that's, your, that's a wish list. Them eyes ain't, ain't your eyes. You ain't got no tiger eyes. Look, I saw somebody boy want to run. What the world? With this cat, cat woman? All that jungle, their eyes black. Blue stuff on the eyelids, faint face painted all up. Boy, I went. We had a went to a home going, and somebody visited it. That we knew. I couldn't tell who it was. I mean, it was painted, packed up, packed. I mean, packed. I'm like, what the who the world is this? They from the family? Oh God, I'm talking about some of y'all mascara. Your primping goes for nothing. You are not going to seduce anyone. They're out to kill you. And what's that I hear? The cry of women in labor. The screams of a mother giving birth to her firstborn. In other words, she said, look, as women of God and men too, there's a certain way we're supposed to look. God wants more than your spirit to be sanctified. He wants your body to take that junk out your ear. Well, listen, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. If you want to be sanctified. If you want to be holy, stop doing you, boo. You're going you're gonna to line up with the word. Y'all call on somebody. You're going to line up with the word. Test my line up with the word. Uh, don't be scared. I'm going to tell them line up with the word. Look at him. Look at him. Are you lining up with the word? Uh, look at him good. Are you lining up with the word? All right. Don't say yeah in church. You're lying if you ain't. You're going to hell. That you ain't lining up. You just lied. <laughs> it's best not to say nothing. Just look right like you got to sneeze. <laughs> what is it? Look at your neighbor. <laughs> You still lying because you ain't sneezing for real. God, just get up and do something. I don't know what you're going to do. Just say no. Just say no. Because I want to dip myself in a deeper hole. 
No, I ain't. Back to First Timothy, y'all. Watch this. He said, not in braided hair. You see, that's not your, 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 your godliness. It's not in your braided hair. You shouldn't feel good about yourself because you got braided hair. Because you got your hair done. It's nothing wrong with a woman feeling good about it. Let me, let me correct. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Women, you're supposed to feel good. After you get your hair done, you supposed. I think that's good for a woman. It's good for your femininity. It's good for your self-esteem to feel good. Because sometimes your hair do make you feel better. About that's good. But I'm talking about replacing that with godliness. And overdoing it. Come on. Over extravagant stuff. Sanctified women, you don't go extreme to feel good. You ain't putting all that junk in your head to feel good. Really, all that junk ain't you. How you feeling good about you and that ain't you? That ain't your hair? Come on, how you feeling good about yourself and that ain't your hair? Brother, come on, am I right now? If I'm wrong, tell me. What you feeling good about is that fake thing in your head. And you letting what's fake, you let external thing make you feel good inside. Let God use your natural hair to make you feel good. Get your natural hair fixed up. Y'all got quiet. Then you feel good about yourself because it's yours. I don't have to like me, but I know if, if I'm wrong, you tell me where I have ever that. I think I get put out of some of these churches. I go preaching that one. Boy, I get put out. They'll shut me down. <laughs> boy, especially if the pastor got that junk in her head, boy. Boy, I get put up out of there. I don't care. Put me out. I'm still telling you. I'm going to preach. I get put me out. I'm still telling you. Get it out your head. Get it out. How you feeling good about you and it's not yours? Wisdom talking to you. I don't care how much of it you have or how, how less of it you have. You love what God gives you. The man, the man you, listen, the man you really liking, you thinking he like you, but he's probably thinking if she get that junk out of her head. You be confused, man. If she would just get that junk out of her head, I could see her for who she really is. Y'all got quiet on me. See, I'm te I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You come, up, you come to me after church, I'm going to tell you the same thing I said. I'm going to tell you. He said, if you could just get the junk out your head. I'm just telling you what the word say. You take your time, do what you got to do. But I'm telling you what God said. See, I, I'm 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 one of them old time preachers in this new this new generational mess. You need somebody gonna open their mouth and tell you what God said. I ain't care about your feelings. I'm care, I'm telling you what God said. So I've been a woman and nobody can't tell you what to do. Your husband can't tell you what y'all got quiet. If that man tell you, don't listen. That's too much, baby. Don't get mad. It's okay. Y'all getting your feelings hurt. Well, you just never thought. He ain't think ain't a thing about you not being pretty. It's about you lining up with God's word. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Lord. I, I, I'm trying to find out what the. Hey, Amen. Kona at. Y'all, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. I got a few ways. I got a little ways to go. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. See, females in this first Timothy, females claimed of superiority were rooted in false teaching that gave life, they gave life man. I'm sorry, I wrote the right thing. Hold on a second. They was rooted in false teaching, and this teaching gave them a sense that they didn't, need, they didn't need help from a man because they was able to lead a man. The heresy that women were mediators of divine knowledge and spiritual life to, to men is what Paul was correcting. So corrects. So uh, it was a Gnostic heresy that Eve gave Adam divine knowledge and spiritual life. So they believed that women 
had the superiority because Eve gave Adam divine life and superiority. And so these women, they couldn't read anyway. They believed anything they heard. And it was causing confusion in the church and in the home. So the Ephesus church was filled with illiterate women who are recent converts from goddess worship. Now watch this. You might not be illiterate as in far as can't read, but if you're a woman that's illiterate in the gospel, you need to be taught. You can't lead nobody. How are you going to? Wait a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I, 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 it's something coming to my mind. False teachers had stirred up trouble in households. And Paul was calling those women back to the proper relationship within their homes in keeping with truth of the gospel. Go back to 1 Corinthians real quick. Then we're going to come back to that. Y'all all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm going to talk about y'all husband now. Chapter 14. Back, we already read this. We have, to, we have to understand. When you read the Bible, you have to read it in context. In other words, read the whole chapter to get an understanding. Don't just take one verse and say, ah, oh, that's what it means. You, gotta, you have to read it in context. Not, you, you, you just can't be out of context because you're going to start just saying women can't preach. But why, wait a minute. What, what's the context by it? What's going on in the story? Why did the writer say, why, did Paul, why was Paul inspired to tell women this? Hmm? Watch this. Back to 1 Corinthians 14 33. Y'all ain't stuck on that hair thing, are you? All right. All right. Yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah, 33. Verse 33, uh, 14 and 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but peace, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Now for him to say that, for Paul to say this, that means it was confusion in the church. For Paul to say, God is not the author of confusion, but peace in the churches, a peace of the churches as in all churches of the saints. That means it was some out of order stuff going on in the church. So he comes back with verse 24. Let your women keep silent. Why? Because there was some stuff that was out of order and confusion in the church. He wasn't talking about every woman. He's talking about the women that was causing confusion in the Corinthian church. He said, I tell you what, because they're out of order. They were sitting there disrupting the services. Um, um, back in them days, the men sat on one side, the women sat on the other one. And the women was enjoying their new freedom in Christ. And so what they was doing, they was asking questions out loud, disturbing the service and all kinds of confusion. And so Paul said, I'll tell you what, when I come to town, this is what I want you to do. I want you to keep silent, women. You out of order. You too loud. Y'all got quiet. He said, what you going to do? Women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted. Paul, I'm going to shut you up. To keep you from talking and being out of order, through the apostolic authority, I'm silencing you. It is not permitted to them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience. As also said the law. And people, I told you before, well, law, I don't sit in the law. The law is you be in subjection to your own husbands. Y'all quiet. And if they learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. I'm going to show y'all something. This ain't talking to every woman. Because every woman in the Corinthian church didn't have a husband. Y'all quiet, huh? He wasn't silencing every woman in the world. Because every woman in the world ain't got no husband. But he said to the married women, you got to know how to be in order, women. Let them ask their husbands at home. For it's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Now watch this. The Holy Ghost asked me a question. For them to ask their husbands at home about what's being preached, what spiritual position, position should the husband be in? He got to know his place too. For her to ask him at home, what place should he be in? 
I'm going to show you in scripture what place he should be in. Malachi okay. chapter 2. Okay. Yeah, what, what, what is she going to ask you at home, man? What, what are you supposed to be? What position would you, what, what position, what is Paul expecting these husbands, what, what position is Paul expecting these husbands to be in? Y'all got Malachi, if you can't find it, just listen to me. Write it down and listen to me. Please, Malachi chapter 2. Y'all y'all just listen. Chapter 2 and verse 7. What, 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 what way should a husband be? For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. The man's supposed to keep knowledge of the word of God. That wife was supposed to seek knowledge from you. Of the word from you. you how she going to seek knowledge from you? But you corner, you lazy. You won't pray, you won't seek. Y'all got quiet here. You won't, you won't fast. You won't live holy. How's she supposed to go to you? You know why? Because you at your place. She is too. But pastor, what? She don't have no husband. Let her come to the priest. The preacher. <laughs> Y'all got quiet. Then she don't have a husband. Come to the preacher. But as husbands, we're supposed to be in a spiritual place with God. Well, if she don't understand something I preach, the first thing she should ask is you. She shouldn't feel no lack of confidence. I can't ask him because I know he don't want to listen. Ain't got no confidence in you because you weren't paying attention in church. Y'all got quiet. That's a knock on me. There ain't no knock on you. It's the truth about you. How you expect that woman to have some confidence in your authority to lead, but you ain't paying attention to nothing being said in church? You ain't taking no notes. You ain't writing no. You ain't writing nothing down. You ain't high, even highlighting nothing. How she supposed to ask you? Y'all don't have to like me. I'll tell you what God said. I'm going home and sit down somewhere. Well, 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 well. Let her ask her husband what he's supposed to, what does the husband supposed to have? The husband lips should keep knowledge. And they should seek the law at God. In other words, he should be praying. He should be in a place where he's praying and seeking God. And so when he, he's at home, he's teaching his wife what God said. Because women, you don't supposed to be loud. Women don't supposed to be loud. Being loud don't mean you're powerful. A woman's supposed to be a meek spirit, especially, especially in the church. If she don't know something, she got to have some self-control. Stop running to me first. Talk to that husband. Y'all got quiet on me. I'm going to ask the pastor, have you asked your husband yet? Did your husband know the answer? Because the Bible said to ask your husband at home. Notice what Paul didn't say. He said, let the wives ask me. He said, them ask their husbands at home. They're going to learn anything. Y'all don't have to like me. That's quiet. Why are you coming to me? You got a husband. You know why? You might not have no confidence in him because he have no knowledge. Y'all don't. Then you going to have to come to somebody that knows. That's a, that's a blow on us, ain't it? That's, Lord, you don't want to marry no man who don't have no knowledge of the word of God. He don't even have to be a preacher. He's still he's the priest of the house. Come on, he's the priest of. We can't be Eli. Eli when he correct his sons. He was he was a man. He was obese. He was a lazy. Y'all, I'm just telling you what the Bible say. He wouldn't correct nothing. He wouldn't correct his own household. And God told him, because you didn't correct your household, I'm going to destroy your whole generation. There's nobody going to carry your name after this. After you die, that's the end of your lineage. And it happened. And it happened. He died. He broke his neck. Fell back after he found out that the Ark of the Covenant was broken. He fell back and broke his neck. And Hapha and Phineas was killed in the battle. And there was no more left of them. Because Eli didn't have the knowledge to carry or to rebuke his sons. Stay in your God-given places. In your God given places, men, we got to be in a position where our wives could have confidence in us to come to us. And if we don't know the answer, we'll seek the law in his mouth to get it. 
I'm gonna, baby, I'm gonna fast on this. We ain't gonna have to ask Reverend about this one. I know Reverend know the answer, but let, let me let me seek the Lord for us. Let me get before me seek the law at his mouth. I'm gonna dig in these scriptures. Let me let me research this. Y'all, and I come back with an answer. This is what it means, baby. And we're going to confirm this through the word. I know, I, I know the Holy Ghost gave it to me, but I want to be in order. Real, listen, I, I, is this what that means? This scripture means X, Y, Z, Z, X, Y. Yeah, that's it. Well, praise the Lord. That's what it meant. But y'all women can't be so full of the devil. Well, you won't ask him. Y'all cry. You can't look at his faults and not respect his priesthood. Y'all quiet too. You're looking at what he ain't doing, but he's still the priest of that house. Man, see, baby, it's first lady. It's, 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 it's out of order. You don't have, you, you, you full of the devil. You want to usurp authority. When a woman want to usurp authority, she ain't going to ask that man about no scriptures. She want to be the one that he asked to. Asked her about the scripture. Come to me. Ask me. You wrong. You sound order. Get down. Come to this altar. Let's get some deliverance. Come on. Some God don't need no Jezebel women trying to control these Ahab men. Ain't no time to be no Ahab. Get up and stop acting like you don't know what to do. Get up and do something. Y'all got tired. Whatever God is going. Whatever she said is. No. Get up and be a man. Get in your in that, that word. Get on your face. Seek the law. Get some knowledge until it take them things out your head. It don't belong now. Get that stuff out that closet. God ain't pleased with that. We ain't going out looking like this. Well, I guess it's the wrong word for tonight. Cause some of these women thought they were ready to get married until they married a strong man. They thought they were ready. I'm ready for a marriage. Get married. You thought you were ready to marry him until he started putting that law down. And everything he says is coming out the scripture. You ain't, listen, let me tell you something, some brothers. Don't let no woman cold chill you out either. Take your fire. Make you compromise a little bit to get along. A man don't compromise to get along. Come on, somebody. Just keep peace. I'm just going to say nothing. You coward and you'll deny the faith. I can't kill nobody here. A man that will correct his wife when she wrong and correct his children and tell them to put some clothes on when they walk around the house naked. You ain't got nothing to say to me. You out of order. Find your place. Oh, your place in God. You ain't no, you ain't got no place to tell me how how to dress and your kids is looking half naked. Come on, bro. Oh, come yeah. on. It's, it's, it's no way around that. Right oh, I'm a I'm a for preaching church, but down the, down the streets looking like whore like whore monger. How I'm listen. How I'm evangelizing around the world, but they prostituting around the corner. Y'all right can't hear. How they, how they giving it up around the corner? I'm giving. I'm. I'm planting the seed in the word to your heart, but men planting seeds in they in they body. Body. Okay. I'm talking about your children. Yo, your underage children. Oh God, given place. Of God, wanna get a word from a from a from a husband husband that's late. A lazy man, woman ain't for the ass. No man of God, no man about her. He lazy. She gonna stay silent for a long time. Man wanna do nothing. Don't wanna. Pray. Let me tell you, I ain't talking about just working. Working. I ain't talking about a man that won't pray. A man that won't seek God. A man that won't spend time in His Word. A man that won't get up early and stay up late for God. Sometimes. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, I mean, a man that's like he work for that white man on that that job. job. Don't work for it. Oh, 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 his knees, his knees, his knees, his knees. A man a woman wanna go to. That's a man, baby. Listen, I know you build your face before God. You just got fresh out your knees. So it's the best time to ask you. What does this mean? I can't see nobody. Here, Cause you've been laboring in power. Shut up! You've been laboring in power. Come on, man, God. Come on. Hey, man, God. You had to ask. It's the man of God. Come on. Come on. Y'all, it's heavy. It's right, though, man of God. It's right, Pastor. It's it's so quiet in here, so I can. Boy, boy. 
I was born in the Holy Ghost to be wild. Born to be wild. I'm just born to be wild in Jesus. Wild locusts and honey coming out the wilderness to stand. Repent. Come on, repent. Ten, ten, ten. Men, repent for not, for not seeking God's face. Repent for not seeking the law in his mouth. Women, repent for being out of order. Repent for him for being overbearing. Repent for you, so you the authority. Repent. God, God said, repent, repent, repent. repent. Because he just will say, that's for me and my house. That, man, that woman didn't speak that. That man said we're going to serve the Lord. That's it. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Yeah, preacher, man, God. This is it, Pastor. What man will protect his family from a lion in the street? He knows a lion in, a lion in the street. He's going he gonna to protect his family. Family, family. How do you not want to want to want to work, 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 but you got bills, bills do? Y'all got quiet. The lion of hunger. A lion. Y'all got quiet here now, here now, here now. A lot of children because they don't have what they need because you won't get up and do what you got to do. And you want her to submit to you. God, listen, woman ain't finna submit to no man that won't keep no order in the house. Y'all let me go home because I think I know I am in the right place. Let, what, what, what kind of woman gonna submit to a man that won't work, that won't pray, that won't seek God, that won't put his foot, foot down? Watch this. What woman won't, what woman want to submit to that don't care about hurting her feelings when she's wrong? She'll love you after a while. But you won't say nothing. Stay in your God, y'all. Y'all. Stay in your God given place. And you know what the Lord teaching me to do? He's teaching me to preach about marriage, 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 but some things I'm staying out of in marriages. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Something, something, some things I'm gonna tell you. Because the man ain't right where he's supposed to be, and the woman ain't either. Y'all got quiet here. Everybody, everybody, everybody one of them want to line up in order. In order. It's bad you showing sure up on his weaknesses while you hiding yours. It's quiet on me, y'all. Want to put all his business out there? He this, he that. He don't know you talking about him. He don't know you came to the pastor talking about him. Did y'all talk about this before you came to me? Know your God given place. You out of order. How you use up an authority over that man? You should have asked him, should we go to them and talk? You out of order. Y'all got quiet. That's Bible. You taking a position that's not yours. You overrode some of the You know what the word head means? That means superior. The me okay, first Corinthians chapter eleven. I'm, I'm gonna show you Bible for this. I ain't for you today. Nah. First Corinthians chapter 11. That's what it is. Let me tell you, tell you what caused this unity in the garden of Eden. Disobedience. Why? Because a woman overstepped her authority and the man let her. He allowed her. Listen, man was supposed to give to the woman, not the woman to the man. But she gave the man the fruit. He should be giving her the authority. But she, listen, it was his job to give her authority. It wasn't her job to drop him sin. Wow. Wow. It wasn't her job to, it wasn't her job to use her authority over his authority. Authority in the garden, but he let it happen. Therefore, look at the disunity and look at the chaos that was in the home. <sighs> it wasn't her place to touch that fruit. Touch that. It wasn't no place to even listen to Satan. See, she was too idle. On her idol, this idol is talking with him. See, women, you don't be idle all day because the devil will talk to you. You ain't strong. You the weaker vessel, not the strong one. You think you're strong, but you weaker. You weaker when it comes to certain levels in the spirit. God said, "I put certain. I put men to be in certain." Levels.